What's going on everybody? It's AJ again from alphapixel.net. Today I'm going to talk about five different ways to lock your objects in Cinema 4D. Now we've all been there where we've accidentally moved an object. Say you have a hundred different scenes in your object and you're clicking around and you accidentally grab one and uh, move it around or either that or you move a parent around. Something happens, you come back, your object is no longer in that perfect position you had it in. Well, luckily, Cinema offers a bunch of different ways to lock your objects to prevent that from happening. Um, they range from pretty standard and straightforward to some that you probably haven't thought of yet. So some are kind of unconventional methods, but we'll go over them very quickly here. None of them are too difficult, so let's just jump right into it. So the first one is the protection tag, which is the most obvious and also the most easy to use. So we have our cube here. Right click on it. Go to Cinema 4D Tags and uh, add the protection tag. Now your axes are grayed out, meaning that you can't move it. You can still affect primitive properties, but if you were to convert that to a polygon object and you're in object mode, you can no longer scale or rotate. If we go into the tag, we see that everything is locked. You, if you've never been inside the protection tag, it actually offers a lot of really cool features that you might be missing out on. So you can unlock parameters individually, which is great. You can set it to none so that position, scale, or rotation are not locked. So now I can move it, but I can't rotate it. Or you can actually limit its distance from its parent. So we know that the cube uh, size, let me undo a few steps here to get back to our primitive cube. So we know that the cube's size is 200. So if we go in and limit the Y, let's set the maximum value really high. If we limit the minimum of Y to 100, now it's sitting on the ground. And if we unlock the X and the Z, we can move this thing around and it'll never go under the floor no matter what we do, which is awesome. That's kind of a cool little thing you can do. You can limit its distance from its parent. Now we could go, we could break that by allowing expressions, um, which is really cool because you can keep your object locked in the viewport, say, oh, it's still in limit. So we can keep your object locked here so you couldn't accidentally budge it, but you can still allow Expresso to move your object however you want to. And allow viewport duplication just means it's unchecked by default, which means you can't apps. So if I hit control, you'll see I have the two boxes. It won't let you duplicate your object. You might be thinking, well, why, why do they do that? And I think it's because if you do have that checked and you start trying to duplicate, you're like, oh, my object, it's not duplicating because it's not, I'm not seeing the duplicate. But if you look over in your attribute manager, you actually are duplicating your object. You just don't see it. So that's kind of there to prevent you from thinking that you're not duplicating your object, but you actually were. So pros of that method are it's the easiest method, very simple to add, very simple to understand. It allows Expresso, um, and the cons are so you can still move the parent. You can still bump the parent and bump the object around. So it's not a true lock no matter what. You could still affect it. When that might be a good thing, might be a bad thing. So just something to note. Moving on to the constraint tag now. If you've never used the constraint tag, you may have never seen it because if you don't work with character objects much, you may not have found the tag because if you right click and go into Cinema 4D tags, it's not there. That's because it's under character tags. And I kind of wish it wasn't because it's just so useful for other things that you know you might not be looking for it under a character tag tab. So if we select the constraint tag, we get a bunch of different options. And that's one of its pluses is it's very versatile. You can you can lock your object to other objects in just about any different way you want. So as soon as you check one of these, as soon as you check one of these, a tab pops up up here, constraint that you checked. And the one that we're really interested in is the PSR although the other ones are pretty useful too. PSR is very similar to the protection tag and when you click down these tabs you'll see it has a very similar checkbox system to let you affect individual parameters. So we have this null at 000. Let's move our cube over. 
and actually let's change this to a circle so we see this null is at 0, 0, 0. Let's drag the null into our target here and you can see that it automatically snapped to that because its offset is set to 0, so this means there's no offset, which means it's locked to that object. Now we can change the offset and you'll see that if we have the cube selected it does not move from that. So that's really cool that you can actually lock it to another object and it doesn't have to be its parent. You can lock it to any object anywhere in the viewport or anywhere in your attribute manager. So if you do move your parent here, the object doesn't move. So that's a that could be a plus depending on what you're doing, but the obvious downside again is that if you had the object it's parented to or locked to and you move that, then the object is going to move again. So it's not again a true lock no matter what, you can still bump things, but it's just a different way to keep it where you want it. Now if you go back to the basic tab, there's the parent tab, which is very similar. It just offers a few different options. So constraints tag, pros, also easy to add. There's lots of options. There's lots of options. You can choose not to follow your parent around. You can lock it to an object that's not your parent. But the cons are, it's it's a little more confusing. There's a little more to look through and set up. So you might not know exactly what each of these do. So you might have to play around a little bit more than just adding the protection tag. But again, offers more flexibility. So moving on to the keyframe method. This method is very, very simple, and what I use it for most is in a camera type situation. So let's start viewing through our camera here. Now let's say I, let's get a person in there. So let's say I've got my person lined up exactly where I want them. And have you ever done that where you haven't locked your camera down at all and you've come back and you're just gonna go like model your object a little bit more and you start rotating around and you're like wait a second this is the camera I didn't want to be moving around in the camera and now I've lost my perfect position well of course you can control or command shift Z which undoes the camera moves that you've done but let's say you're out of undoes and you can't get back to that spot well what you can do is when you find your perfect position here you can just set a position scale rotation keyframe and now say you did come back and move things around wouldn't really matter because you have that keyframe locking the position as soon as you move in the timeline it's gonna snap back so pros of this one very very simple to use just simple one button setup is like a fail safe to keep your camera where you want it downside is it's not as easy to see what's happening you may have forgotten you had the keyframe there or whatever. Maybe you moved your camera into a new position you thought was better. Now let's say you had that keyframe there. As soon as you move in the timeline, oh, you've lost your new position. So, I mean, as long as you're aware that it's there, it's nice and helpful, but it can still be a little confusing. But it does allow you to move your object around freely and always have that assurance that you're gonna be able to go back. So now we get into some of the fun stuff. We'll get into just some very simple espresso, and really don't be scared of this because it's about as simple as it gets. So let me drag my editor in here so you can see what's going on. And let me find my nodes. There they are. See, this is as simple as it is. It's just a two node setup. And what this does is it, it lets you, whoops, let's hide those other objects. <clears throat> If we grab our cube object, you can see that it's locked. Now, you'll see that we have different examples for local, global, and matrix. And if you don't know what local and global are, it's an essential concept to understand. And I actually went over it in my last tutorial, um, knowing that I was going to be doing this tutorial. So I did that in a separate tutorial so I didn't have to waste time talking about it here. So we didn't get off topic. So if you're unsure what it is, just go check that tutorial out. I'm going to move forward with the understanding that you know what local and global mean. So to set this up, all we have to do is right click in Expresso and go to new node, Expresso, general and constant. And what a constant is, is it's a number 
that you set, that does not change. It stays consistent. But the thing to note is, so we'll, we have to bring our object in. The thing to note is that you just have to line up the data types. So in the constant, it's set to real, and the cube's position works in vector. So we need to set the constant data type to vector. And we also need to go into the cube's input and set it to position. Now this is the local position of the cube. So then all we need to do is tie that in. And I'll just get rid of one of these so we don't have a duplicate. So now it is cons the cube's position stays constant at 0, 0, 0, and it will not move. But like those other methods, if you grab the parent and move it around, you can still do that because it's tied to the local, the cube's local position. The next method, which is the global position, and that is the identical to the previous setup with the constant, bring your object in, except when we click on our object's input here, we need to select the global position. So this will lock it to 3D space's origin. And what's great about this is you select the cube, you can't move it. You select the parent, the object still doesn't move. It's a true lock into the scene, which is awesome. The only downside of this is if you ever do want to move your object, grab the constant and, you know, move it in here. With, unless you, you know, set up some user data where you can have it more accessible in the attribute manager, but so it's not a very convenient method if you have to make some quick adjustments. So there's one more method with Expresso that we're going to look at, and that is the matrix. And all the matrix does, it's the same exact setup, except when you click, you're going to go to the global matrix. And if you don't know what a matrix is, all it is is it is position, scale, and rotation all in one setup, all in one, all in one input. So before, let me just quick go back to global or local, either one. This is only locking the position. If we wanted to do scale and rotation, we would have to go in and select, you know, rotation and scale, which is just you know a little bit more of a setup, but. With this method, we can still rotate and we can still scale. But with this method, with the global matrix method, it locks all of that. So we can't rotate, we can't scale. Super easy setup, just like before. There's a tr this is the most true lock yet where we can't move anything. The only downside is that when you go in and want to change things, when you look at a matrix, it's not very pretty. It's very not user friendly because look at all these little boxes. It's not very clear what any of them do, although I'll tell you that offset is the position. So that's pretty easy. That's the X. This is the Y. This is the Z. And you might think, oh, maybe rotation, scale. Nope. Wrong. <laughs> it's very set up in a weird way where one, one, one here is, I believe, the scale. And then these ones, when you mess with these, it does, you know, it's not very user friendly at all. So you definitely don't want to be messing with adjusting any matrix values by hand to get things where you want them. So that is the downside of this method. Pros to the Expresso is it's relatively easy and there's just true locking no matter what. Cons are you need a basic knowledge of Expresso and data types. And the other downside is you need to go into Expresso or set up some user data to be able to change the values. So the final method here is the simple Expresso Plus. And this, I think, is by far the best method. And it's also pretty easy to set up. We only need to know about one more node, and that is the freeze node. And what the freeze node does is it lets a value, it takes a value, and whenever you s hit the switch, which if you select the node, you can see there's a switch. Whenever you activate the switch, it freezes the value wherever it's at and will not let any new values flow out. With that knowledge, what we've done is we brought in our cube. So instead of the constant this time, we have our object and we're actually gonna be feeding our object's global matrix, which is position, scale, rotation. We're gonna be feeding that out and back into itself. So if this switch is off, we can move our object freely wherever we want because it's just feeding its value back into itself. So there's no, 
no issues. And as soon as we hit the switch, we freeze the value so no new values can come in. And now we can't move it at all or rotate it or scale. It is a true lock. Even if we grab the parent, you cannot do any of those things until you go to the freeze node and uncheck the switch. Now you can move it again. Let me just undo this a little bit here. All right. So one little extra piece of information, if we grab the freeze node, we can drag the switch into the viewport. Now we have a very easy to access interactive switch where we can turn it on and off whenever we want. We can get our objects into place wherever we want them and hit the switch and you will never be able to move that object again until you de deactivate the switch. Now you can move again. You can activate, nothing moves. Your parent can move, but the object won't. So that is by far my favorite method to lock an object, a true lock, where it will never be moved from where you want it to. One thing to note though, of course, if you switch out of object mode and into model mode, model mode, for scaling anyway, does not affect the object's actual coordinates. So therefore you can scale in model mode, even if it's locked. And that applies to anything because it's not actually affecting the object's numbers at all. Just something to note. So make sure you're in object mode whenever you're done with your modeling. All right, that is five different ways to lock your objects. I'm sure there's many more ways and feel free to put those in the comments below. I'd love to see what you guys come up with or if you have other ways to lock your objects. It's a pretty essential task when you know you have things set up just the way you want them and don't want them to move. So I hope you guys enjoyed that tutorial. We'll have some more great stuff coming out soon. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys in the next tutorial.